you join me with some corrugated steel but that's not the video on top of it is yet another box and inside it is a day 5 kilowatt inverter and uh, I am at my parents house and I've got the very unpleasant task of removing this poor inverter that has died so many times because of the salty seawater it's only IP21 rated these guys they just don't last in the seawater okay so just before we carry on with this video just two disclaimers firstly please don't uh, play around with electrical wiring unless you know what you're doing or you're, you've got uh, some qualification or you're doing it professionally um, and secondly I am not trying to tell you what inverter is best uh, personally here at home and this is my home setup that you are looking at right now I am using a Lux Power 5 kilowatt exactly as the one you'll see me taking off the wall in uh, this video I'm very happy with this inverter I got it second hand actually more than two years ago and it is still going strong I've had no issues with it uh, and I'm also not saying that uh, this is an inferior inverter to the day or otherwise or other way around uh, so I just like to make those two disclaimers uh, before we carry on with this video. Yeah, it's actually only IP20 rated, which means not waterproof and because it has fans at the bottom, in moist areas it blows up and condensates and blah blah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to replace it with an IP65 inverter. And... Uh, the first issue was our panels we have three panels uh, well six panels uh, three in series two strings that come in up here but uh, this inverter I think it runs from a it doesn't say on the side but it's MPPT picks up from around oh there we go MPPT from 120 so those panels kick out about 121 plus so it works the new one only starts from 140 so going to have to wire it in series it's going to be my first uh, uh, wiring of the MC4 connectors I got a whole pack of them so uh, let's see how that goes okay skipping ahead a bit after a lot of testing I have successfully done my first MC4 connection and it is putting the two strings that come in I should have done it on the roof out there the sun just came out but it's a very rainy day I should have done it on the roof but I'm too lazy to get up there so I've just connected two of them in series here with this MC connector and I did confirm on the after only connecting the that's the first MPPT string this is the second one if I switch it on I have confirmed that that's PV1 this is the old dead inverter there we go PV2 is now at going up to 280 volts so my first job of the day, getting the solar panels in series, all six of them seems to have been a success. The next big thing is going to get this guy off the wall yet again and getting the very heavy day 5 kilowatt on there. That thing is about 21 kilograms. This guy is only 14. That thing's got a big bracket that needs to be mounted. This thing just mounts with uh, screws at the top and bottom of the case. So let me see how I get on with that. Switch off the solder. I'm very paranoid. I am not looking forward to getting an electric shock, so I'm just putting my multimeter in AC and just checking where is our AC input. There we go. 240 volts. I'm going to have to switch that off. And the load is also connected so we've got ac let me just check we should have absolutely no dc just a little bit bleeding off there on pv2 and pv1 is going to be dead because i disconnected it yeah okay let me go switch off the main feed to the inverter ok 
Okay, we're off. There we go. So this place, what the hell? Already got it wet. So I can unscrew this and get this mounted up there on the wall. I just need to take some measurements. What do you He really likes this packing material, it's very bad for him. I think it's called Pika, and we had one cat that used to eat wool jerseys, which was very bad. What are you doing? Well, it's something. Looks like an inverter hanging. Can screw it in place. Now the big thing is the wiring and is these battery wires going to make it? That's the next big problem that I'm facing. We might make it in terms of the battery. That was my big concern. Anyways, let me get you guys down there again and I can start wiring. I'm gonna have to do the wiring next. I'm gonna start with the batteries, but these guys need to be coiled around that. And I think I'm going to have to move this battery breaker here. And that's not going to be the most pleasant of tasks. But let me get cracking with that. And then bring you in when I have some progress made on this whole situation. I was really concerned. Couldn't find the positive or negative. But it's right up there. Just above the connector. So that's cool. Okay, many hours later. I think... We've got something going. That thing needs to be attached to the wall. PV panels are connected, not switched on. I've just connected grid and it seems it's good. So uh, let me just do a test if I actually, well, grid should be good if we have this. So next I'm going to introduce PV to it. Boy, let's hope it goes well. That's PV. Is it seeing anything? It does have a switch on the side for PV, which is currently off. I'm going to turn it on. PV is on. It's not seeing anything. Okay, interesting. P 
PV, 280 volts. Okay, so it's seeing something. It's clicking. Okay, let's go back, 10 watts, okay. Something's beeping. Not sure if it's a good beep or a bad beep. Did I do something wrong? Don't think so. All right, let's try the battery. It's seeing the battery at 51 volts. It's doing things. It doesn't have load. I'm going to introduce load now and see what that does. I'm not sure about that buzzing. It's very high pitched. But anyways, let me go switch on the load. Okay, load switched on. It's picking up 400 watts. Okay, I think it's good. I'm just not sure about that. It's a very weird hum. But this is in the garage, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, now let me tidy up this uh, mess. Switch the house back to, uh, to be on the grid and bypass this. Uh, it seems to have gotten the time. I don't know how. It doesn't have comms yet. I need to wire in the comms. Uh, but I'll do that shortly. Just bringing the whole thing down and making this look a bit nicer. Many, many, many hours later, I have finally figured this thing out. Unfortunately, it seems unlike with Lux Power, I cannot even remotely control this from my phone or the web app despite being a super admin, so I'll try to sort that out. I heard Solar Assistant is a good option. But it's finally installed. These coiling wires was a real pain in the ass. The battery one I've got outside. The other ones are coiled inside the BMS. I got the MC4 connectors down there for the solar. It's running a single string from the combiner box. So we're only using this breaker here with these fuses and this search predictor these are not used we are going to set up more solar panels feeding in here and it's working with the stage 4 volta battery that was here before uh, it did actually pick that up just check there on battery yeah got it state of charge is a bit low uh, i'm going to see what solar does tomorrow uh, what does that do? LIBMS. Yeah, it does actually detect it as having being a pylon battery. So, yeah, it's good. It's not perfect. But um, I guess we'll see how this goes and what I can do in terms of battery management. But the inverter, inverter is mounted. There's a mounting holes for the old one. I'll still get this wires, wire management a bit better. But it's on the wall. It's solid. Um... And it's quiet because it's got passive cooling there at the back. So, uh, well, that trunking is not too solid. But anyways, that's it. Um, a reasonably successful install, I'd say. A lot more work than I anticipated. But um, I'm glad it's sorted and I hope I can get something going with this day inverter. As, uh, yeah, I'm very much used to Lux Power. The Lux Power is inside the box going back and I did fire it up I just connected it to the wall outlet with 220 volts uh, yeah I think the motherboard died again after being replaced uh, it's still giving me an error zero which is an internal communications error and it's the, the dongle so uh, I guess I'm just going to sell that Lux power 
So it's been a week now since I installed that day inverter and I can say that the after sale support I got from day was absolutely incredible. They updated the firmware for me and also helped me set up a plant by which I can manage this. Um, so I don't have to use the on-screen display which is kind of impossible for me since that inverter is 200 kilometers away from me but yeah I can manage all the settings I need to manage now remotely uh, as I would do with my Lux Power inverter basically change all the settings I would want to change uh, most particularly for me is the usage what battery percentage it can go to at what times so right now I just have it set to uh, it can go down to 22 percent any time of the day as it's not that critical uh, there's nobody at that house right now, but if somebody were to stay there and maybe if it's load shedding, I definitely adjust those parameters and it's good to know that I can do it uh, from anywhere. The app also itself is not bad looking. I've, uh, I've ha I also have access to all of this in the app. But yeah, very, very happy with the support they gave me and also the way that this whole um, day uh, inverter setup is working. Um, I had uh, some uh, people saying beforehand that you should rather get SunSync, they've got a much better interface and I, I believe that, but uh, I'm very glad I took the plunge, went with Day and uh, yeah, learned a few things along the way and um, if you enjoyed what you see, saw here, me messing around with things I have absolutely no idea about, then uh, be sure to check out my next video whenever it's out. Thanks very much for watching.